Whoa, welcome, 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 welcome to Wrestle Cram. This is your boy, your host with the most, but humble, and I do mean humble, D Nostra Novice, aka Derek. And it is the weekend. What am I doing on the weekend? We have a brand new show. It is called Duh. Dramatization, everybody. <laughs> it's called the Dirt Sheet Roundup, where I grab all of the most important um, segments that I deem feet, and we put them into a show. We uh, we're, we're try I'm um, trying something new where I should be doing news as well, um, and I want a, a, a show on the weekend. So we're gonna do this. Uh, on a weekly basis now. Before you do anything, watch the show. If you like it, give me a like. If you think it's awesome, then go ahead and sub. After that, if you think it's awesome and you want to do some more stuff for me, go ahead, hit the notification bell. I do five shows a week. And uh, let's, let's get into it. But before I do that, <laughs> let's do some cleaning. Let's do some cleaning. Um... I will have a show Monday where I will give you what my segment will be about on my two cent, which I do on Thursdays. Uh, that will be at the end of the Raw uh, review on Monday. Uh, also, I am wait we're still waiting on those last uh, those two slots for the double or nothing. After that, I will. I promise you, I will have. The prediction show um, for Double or Nothing. Also, I will be watching Double or Nothing um, for the very first time, a pay-per-view. Um, and I will do a review on that as well. Other than that, uh, let's get into what I'm going to talk about. No, but first and foremost, first and foremost, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Y'all know I like to collect toys or whatnot. I collect collectibles. Um... I held off on the uh, anime stuff, and now I got a uh, <laughs> I got a Candyman toy. I thought this was really cool. Uh, I saw this at Walmart, you guys. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Be my victim. I love Candyman back in the gap when I was a younger uh, younger uh, uh, sprout, and I thought that was pretty cool. I just wanted to you know show you my new toy. But uh, first and foremost, uh, we're gonna, I got five topics that I have. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it five topics until I can try to get a little better with the, uh, uh, I, uh, with the um, you know, this little segment. A lot of this comes from PW Insider. Um, and, you know, I love, uh, I love Uncle Dave. Uh, keep, doing, keep doing God's work, y'all. <laughs> Uncle Dave is awesome. But um, first and foremost, uh, the first... Uh, topic is Stephanie McMahon uh, steps down. She steps down uh, after so many years in the company. Um, they pro they have promised that she will come back. Uh, apparently, she's kind of uh, been working, 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 and she just needs some time to herself. Now, uh, a lot of people are talking about you know Paul Levesque, aka Triple H. It was an issue with that, so she was just trying to, you know, be a little, you know, help out. But the sources are saying that uh, Paul Levesque is actually back. He's back. He's working full time. Uh, if you don't know, he did have a cardiac uh, situation um, where he was out for a while. And uh, Stephanie, you know, and John Laurinaitis, a lot of those people did step up and uh, help with uh, a lot of the day-to-day -day operations. Of course, Shawn Michaels as well. Um, so, uh, she says she's coming back. Of course, she's coming back, but she's just want to take a little time to herself. We wish her all the best. Much love, much respect. Um, you know, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that storyline. After that, um, this week on Friday... We had a Baron Corbin um, promo, really bad promo, and we didn't see Madcap Moss. Now, kayfabe is that, you know, he's still injured, 
But think about it. We didn't see Madcap Moss. You know why we didn't see Madcap Moss? Apparently, we are going to get a repackaging of Madcap Moss. If you seen my preview, if you see my review of of SmackDown last week, not this one, last week, I was truly intrigued when he was talking about where he wanted to be a participant in the Money in the Bank. And I was like, that, I'm, I'm, I, I really respect that times 12. So we're going to see what happens with this repackaging. Hopefully they get past the corny jokes. You know, they get past that horrible intro. And he wrestles in something that isn't spandex and, 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 and um, uh, well, spandex, yes, but the, uh, the, the overalls, this just, they're just bad. It's just bad. Let's see what the repackaging is. I can't wait to see it. I do want to see him strive because he is, uh, what Vince McMahon, you know, likes. And I kind of do, he is starting to get to me where I'm starting to enjoy this. I'm starting to enjoy the storyline. So I guarantee they will have a match at Hell in a Cell. All right, next segment. Number three is uh, MJF is thinking of going to WWE. Well, we don't know. The thing is, if you don't know what's going on with MJF, this has been going on for about a, a, a while now. Um, MJF is, is wanting more money. Uh, Tony Khan is like, you're in a contract. Uh, but MJF is like, hey, um, I have done above and beyond what I'm supposed to be doing, okay? Um, even the locker room is saying, yeah, he has done above and beyond stuff. So, um, his contract is up in a couple of years, and they are, and I guarantee he is thinking of jumping ship. If you haven't looked at my two cents, I think that's a great thing to do is to jump ship, go to different organizations, branch out, reinvent yourself. So I can't be mad at what he's talking about. Now, on the other end, you do have a multi-billionaire uh, who just bought Ring of Honor, and I guarantee he still has money to throw around. Uh, if I was a booker, if I was a uh, president, if I was a CEO of a wrestling organization and my top heel is thinking of leaving, then I think it's time for everybody to sit down and see what we can do. See if we can see what we can negotiate. Um, and of course, you know, uh, just like Steve and Larson says, he's technically a heel. So I guarantee that a lot of his merch isn't all running off the shelves due to him being a heel. That's tradition. Usually when you're a bad guy, your merch doesn't sell all that well. So I can't be, you know, you, you have to understand two sides of what's going on. Uh, let me move this aside just a little bit. But, um, but you know, just like I said, I can't, I can't be mad at Tony Khan. I can't be mad at, um, at uh, my boy MJF as well. Um, but... Let's keep going. Let's keep going, y'all. Um, I have another one. This is the one that I wanted to talk about a lot. Um, Ric Flair is on his way back to the ring, you guys. Um, I guarantee if you are a wrestling person like myself, you did see the video of Ric Flair and, um, 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 goodness gracious, um, um, slip my mind, you guys. What's what's his name? <laughs> They'll come to me. But um, he 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 had a match. Well, he does. He's practicing or whatnot. And I mean, the video is showing that it's it's a good it's it's good. But um, he will have a his final match um with um on July thirty first. In Nashville, apparently it's like a fairgrounds type ordeal, some type of thing. But apparently he's supposed to be having a uh, triple threat match uh, with him, FTR versus the Rock and Roll Express. Now, that match I can understand. I'm cool with because it's a tag team match, and 
you know, he doesn't have to do a lot of work if it's a tag team match. It makes perfect sense. He can do about 10% and they can carry the other 90, you know. And, of course, you know, he can get the win with the figure four, you know, do, do his little struts and all that good stuff. But here's the thing. I will tell you this. This is truly cringe. This man just came back from almost dying like two, three years ago. Now, if that wasn't the case and he's just an older guy, I would have been okay with that. I completely would have been okay with that. But Rick is, I, I don't, and, and once again, I don't know his, his personal health, but this man literally was on his deathbed. And now he wants to come back. He's in his early 70s, and I truly am on the ropes about seeing this. In the comments, y'all let me know. Do you Are you yay or nay for Ric Flair coming back to the ring to do one final match or the way it's looking two matches? Um, what, what do you think? What, what do you think? Uh, and, <laughs> the pistol only says, thanks. The main event... And if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, I am sorry for you. We have the debacle of Naomi and Sasha Banks. All right. Once again, I don't do anything on Mondays, but watch the shows. I'm thinking this is kayfabe. I'm thinking something is going on where uh, Dewdrop and Nikki Cross are fighting and somebody got injured, kayfabe-like, and they left, which made, you know, the Becky Lynch and Asuka uh, debacle with that match happen. That's what I thought what was going to happen. But what happened was that Sasha Banks was not happy with the direction of what was going on. Before they even started the conversation, both Naomi and Sasha had their bags in their hand and they talked to John Laurinaitis, who is the president of, who is the, uh, the, the supervisor of talent relations. Um, they didn't like what was going on, so what they did was they got their belts, they put it on the desk of John Laurinaitis, and they left. Now, during the show of Raw, they were saying uh, unprofessional, you know, something happened. Once again, I'm, I'm in my head, I'm still thinking that, you know, this is a work or whatnot. This is some type of kayfabe work. Apparently, it was not. So, uh, what the rumors, what the rumor mill is saying is that they wanted to focus on tag team females and they wanted to expand it. They wanted to make it better. Okay, now the producer is telling them, hey, you know, you do know this is just scripted, right? You don't have to worry about all that. They were upset behind that because they're like, why are we in this main event? The, the thing was that Naomi was supposed to win and face Bianca Belair at Hell in a Cell. Sasha was supposed to face was supposed to gonna, was going to be the next opponent for um, the uh, the SmackDown uh, Women Champion, uh, the baddest woman on the planet, um, X, Y, and Z. Now, what I'm hearing is that the tag team belts were going to be put on the back burner. They're still going to be tag team champions, but they were going to wait for two months for them to do another segment with those belts. That makes no sense. You have the tag team champions. Just do what you've been doing for the longest and just make another team so they can face them. So... They were very upset behind that. They knew that they were not going to go over against uh, Bianca Belair and uh, the SmackDown's Women Champion. They knew that they were not going to go over. They knew they were going to lose. So Sasha and Naomi was like, 
what is the point of us doing this when we have belts and you have numerous women on the roster that can fight these the, the champions? That I completely understand. But we also hear that one of the producers is saying that nobody in the back room or nobody in the locker room is agreeing with what Sasha did. That I truly disagree with. Uh, so um, on SmackDown, they did tell uh, everybody that they are suspended indefinitely. And also uh, today, which is Saturday, they have said they have taken all of Sasha Banks and Naomi's merch off of WWEshop.com. This is my thing. You have to think of it on two different perspectives, okay? It's okay to stand up for yourself. I'm not mad at Sasha. I'm not mad at Naomi. <clears throat> not mad at them at all. I'm not mad at them at all for what they did. You are under contract, though. And it this isn't like the UFC where you are fighting and it's real. This is scripted. So, if the producer is telling you to do something that you don't feel, you're a grown-up. You can, you can say, hey, I don't want to do it. It's okay. All right? It's okay. But, you know, you're getting a paycheck. That's the thing. I'm always, if you know anything about uh, Dino Stranavis, I'm always about team paycheck, okay? So if it's something that the producers, and, and it's already written, they already knew what was going down, because I guarantee they already knew what was going to happen. And all of a sudden, on the day of, you say, hey, I'm not feeling it. You know, you pull an ultimate warrior. That's my thing. They pulled an ultimate warrior where I don't want to do this. I can't be mad at them, but you have to understand that, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. I hate to sound like that, but, you know, it's scripted, you know, and I'm getting a nice, I guarantee Naomi's getting a nice check, and Sasha Banks is getting a nice check. Here's the thing. Another thing that we that a lot of people didn't know is that both women uh, contracts are up in a couple of months, so... I guarantee that a lot of people like Sasha does have her fans. Uh, I mean, Naomi does have her fans, but Sasha is one of the biggest hits in WWE. So I guarantee that somebody's going to be knocking. I don't know who it is. My my guess will be, you know, Tony Khan, hopefully. But we will find out. Um, other than that, uh, I did enjoy y'all. Um, like, share, and subscribe. Other than that... Love, peace, and of course, wrestling.